In this video, we will show you how to set up your Ruby on Rails development environment from start to finish. This guide is specifically designed for users on Windows looking to utilize Linux subsystem for development. We will be utilizing the PagerTree Ruby on Rails setup guide, which can be found at pagertree.com forward slash blog. Step 1. Enable Windows Subsystem for Linux, or WSL. We will first enable WSL by navigating to the Windows Search Console and looking for Turn Windows Features On or Off. Within this Windows Feature window, we will scroll down until we find Windows Subsystem for Linux. Ensure this box is checked as this will allow us to utilize Ubuntu for our Ruby on Rails development. Click OK, then let the dependencies install. Once the dependencies have installed, you will be prompted to restart. Step 2. Install Ubuntu. Navigate to the Microsoft Store through the Windows Search Console, then search for Ubuntu LTS. Note, do not install the generic Ubuntu app. Please install an LTS version. This way we can set up the proper roles, users, and permissions. Download the latest version of Ubuntu LTS. Once downloaded, open your terminal and allow Ubuntu to complete the installation. This may take a few minutes. When that is complete, enter a username and password for your Ubuntu installation. This will be the password used throughout the Ruby on Rails setup. Step 3. Update the package list and dependencies for Ruby. Open your Ubuntu terminal and run the following command to update your package list. sudo apt-get update. This may take a few moments. We will copy the next command off the PagerTree Ruby on Rails setup guide and then paste that into our terminal. Step 4. Install the ASDF version manager. We will be utilizing the commands from the PagerTree Ruby on Rails setup guide. Copy and paste these lines one at a time into your Ubuntu terminal. The PagerTree setup guide is regularly updated, so if there are additional commands, utilize them. Once the ASDF version manager has been installed, we will install the Ruby and Node.js plugins with the following commands. ASDF plugin add Ruby and ASDF plugin add Node.js. Step 5 Install Ruby. To install Ruby, we will first check for the most recent version by running the following command ASDF install. Ruby dash L. Once you've selected the version of Ruby you would like to use, you can install it with the following command ASDF install Ruby and then version number. This may take a few moments. When you've installed your Ruby version, set it as default by running the following command ASDF global. Ruby, and then version number. Once that is complete, you can confirm the Ruby version by running these two commands, which Ruby, then Ruby-V. Step 6. Install Node.js. To install Node.js, we will first check for the most recent version by running the following command, ASDF install Node.js-L. From here, you can select the version you would like to download. Install your selected version with the following command. ASDF install Node.js and version number. This may take a few moments. To set this version as default, we'll run the following command. ASDF global Node.js version number. To confirm your Node.js version number, run the following two commands. Which node? Node-V. 
The last step is to install Yarn, a JavaScript package manager. The following command, npm install dash g yarn. Step seven, configure Git. To configure Git, you must first have a GitHub account. This can be created at github.com. We will be utilizing the commands on the PagerTree Ruby on Rails setup guide to complete this step. Run the commands in step 7.2 one by one. Remember to replace any sections that say your name or your email with the name and email used to create the GitHub account. Once that has been completed, we will generate an SSH key with the command in step 7.3. Copy and paste that command into your terminal. Take the output of this command and paste it into the SSH key section of your GitHub account. This can be found in Settings, SSH Keys. We can then confirm everything is working by running the command SSH dash t git at github.com if successful you will receive hi username you've successfully authenticated but github does not provide shell access step 8 install rails you can check for the newest version of rails at rubygems.org forward slash gems forward slash rails forward slash versions once you find the version of rails you would like to install run gem install rails dash v and the version number Note, you can also run gem install rails to install the latest version of rails. Once complete, you can confirm your rails version with rails-v. Step nine, install PostgreSQL. First, we will install Postgres with the command in step 9.1. Copy and paste this command into your terminal. Once installed, we will start the Postgres service with sudo service postgresql start. Copy and paste the command in step 9.3 into your terminal. Once completed, we will ensure Postgres starts on boot with sudo systemctl enable postgresql. Optional step, install Redis. First, Install Redis with sudo apt-get install redis. Start the Redis server with sudo service redis-server start. Then enable Redis on boot up with sudo systemctl enable redis server. Step 10. Get your Rails app running. First, we will create your app with the command rails new myapp-d postgresql. Replace myapp with whatever your desired app name is. Once completed, change your terminal directory to your new app with cd app name. Run the bundler to ensure all gems and versions are installed and correct with the command bundle install. Then, create a new database with the following two commands. bin slash rails db colon create. Then, bin slash rails db colon migrate. You are now ready to start your server. That can be done with the command bin forward slash rails server. Your environment is now complete and your app can be viewed on localhost 3000 or by clicking the address in your console. For additional learning resources and guides, see PagerTree's Ruby on Rails development guide at pagertree.com forward slash blog.